Can you hear me like this? Yeah? Okay, so maybe I'll skip. <laughs> All right, uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, so uh, today I, I want to talk about uh, Higgs physics in, uh, as a future collider. And, and uh, a disclaimer is that uh, this is mostly, I, I could be talking science fiction <laughs> in the next 30 minutes uh, because nobody knows what's going to happen. But, but on the other hand, you know, uh, it's very important to be prepared you know, if, if a future collider did indeed happen. So uh, uh, that, that's why I, I think it, it's perhaps <coughs> worth uh, spending at least 30 minutes uh, thinking about uh, what we should do uh, if we had a future collider, and, and especially in terms of Higgs physics, what we can do. All right? So, uh, of course, we know a lot about the Higgs boson that was discovered at the 125 GeV. And this is a summary of the signal strength compared to the standard model expectations. And by and large, in all these channels that you look at, uh, you, you see that you know, the, everything seems to be consistent with standard model expectation within 10 or 30 percent uncertainty. Okay. Uh, but uh, this is uh, in terms of the signal strength. And so uh, for now, I I'm happy to call the uh, H125 uh, the standard model Higgs, okay, since everything looks standard model-like. So uh, the, the, the question is, if we had a future uh, machine, how could we use it to study the 125 GeV Higgs? Okay. And so, by the way, uh, uh, at some point uh, here, uh, my focus is on the Hadron machine, but at some point I will also talk about lepton machine uh, briefly. But, so, but in any case, we are talking about at least 10, 20 years from now. So this is mostly just my personal uh, 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 thinking. And moreover, I have mostly questions and very few answers. And, and but given the topic, this is very fitting because, you know, this is an area that uh, 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 not too many people uh, have started thinking about. So, of course, the most important question we want to answer is, uh, is H125 the standard model Higgs boson? Okay? So, uh, what is a standard model Higgs boson, you would ask? It turns out that the bar of being the standard model Higgs is very high because uh, uh, if you look at the coupling of the standard model Higgs to all the other particles, for example, the Higgs, standard model Higgs coupling to mass gauge boson is given by uh, these two couplings, is given, and the coefficient is completely determined by the MW, MZ, and Higgs VEB, which is roughly 246 GeV. Okay? So we know MW, we know MZ, we know V, so we know the standard model Higgs coupling to W and Z boson. And for the coupling to the massless gauge bosons, we have coupling to two gluons, two photons, and Z plus photon. And again, once we know the mass of the 125 GeV, we can compute these coefficient to very high precision, and we know what they are. Okay, this is roughly uh, 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 what they are, the size of these couplings. Okay, so it's, it's, it's very precisely predicted. And in terms of coupling to fermions, again, it's the same thing. We know the fermion mass, we know the VEB, so we know the standard model Higgs coupling to all the standard model fermions. And then there is also the self-couplings of this 125 GeV Higgs. And we know the mass. The cubic term is, again, determined by the mass of the Higgs boson. So is the quadric term. Okay? So that means that uh, since we know every mass in the standard model right now, and we know the Higgs VEB, so we know every single coupling here on this slide. Okay, and so this is a very, very uh, a predictive model. That is, once we know the Higgs mass, we know the fermion mass, we know the W and Z mass, we know every single copy of the standard model Higgs. Okay, so on the other hand, so far we have only measured a subset of these couplings to within 12, 10, 20 uh, percent of uncertainty. For example, we know that uh, we measure the coupling to W and Z boson, okay? We measure the coupling to gluon, photons, and we do not yet have the sensitivity for the Higgs coupling to Z plus photons. And for the coupling to fermions, 
we only measure the coupling. We have some idea about its coupling to uh, B quark, top quark, and, and tau lepton. <coughs> but we have yet to measure the coupling to the rest of the uh, fermion. Okay? And for the self coupling, we know the mass, but we have no idea whatsoever about the cubic coupling and the quartic coupling of the standard model here. Okay? So even though, you know, uh, uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the summary of the signal strength, you see that everything looks uh, 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 pretty much standard model like. But if you want to really pin down whether this is the, the, stand, the standard model Higgs, I think there, there's still a lot to be learned. Okay? In order for this guy to be, in order for, for this H125 to be the standard model Higgs, we need to make sure that every single copy on this slide is exactly what's expected from the standard model. But so far, I think it's fair to say that we are still far from that situation. Okay? So, so to prepare for a future collider, let's ask how new physics could show up in the Higgs sector. And that's pretty much what I want to do in the rest of my talk. So I want to uh, propose a, 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 a four aspects where new physics could show up in the Higgs sector, all right? So the most commonly considered is that the coupling strength could deviate from standard model expectation. That is, in the previous slide that I showed that uh, all these couplings of the coupling strength could be different from what's expected from the standard model. And the second possibility where new physics could show up is that we could have new coupling structure beyond those existing in the standard model. Okay, and this is getting more attention lately, but uh, the most interesting possibilities, in my opinion, are the CP and flavor violating coupling. Because they tell us something about the symmetry at a much higher energy scale. Okay, and the third possibility is that the heat could couple to a new degree of freedom that we have not observed. Okay, for uh, one very well known example is a Higgs proto dark matter, that the dark matter could couple to the standard model through the Higgs. Okay, that's one possibility. Or Higgs could couple to other soft new physics that we have not observed so far. Okay, that's the third possibility. And the fourth possibility also ha ha has been discussed uh, uh, a lot in the literature that, that is there could exist partners of the 125 GeV Higgs. Okay, this includes uh, uh, the possibility of additional scalars or fermions. Okay, or we could have new resonances in WW scattering that unitarize the WW scattering together with the H125. So, sorry, so what, what do you mean about uh, by, by soft new physics? Yes, I'll give you some new examples. Yeah. Basically, just say that there could be new light degree of freedom that will show up in the, in the decay of the 125 GV Higgs that we have now observed. Right. So uh, first, a uh, 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 possibility is coupling strength deviation. This uh, has been discussed uh, very, very much in the literature, and generically, we can estimate the deviation in the standard model coupling uh, uh, using the uh, uh, the decoupling limit. That is, uh, you know, with, uh, if there's a new scale of physics that contribute that would uh, uh, cause the deviation in the uh, uh, Higgs coupling strength. Then roughly speaking, uh, the deviation goes IV square over the, the, the mass scale of the new physics square. So if we put the mass scale of new physics at one TV, the deviation here is only 5%. Okay? But we see this 5% is still much smaller than the present uncertainties of the order of 20 to 30%. Okay? So this is just say say this is just, just saying that if we expect new physics at one TV scale. The deviation is in the Higgs coupling strength is actually too small to be showing up right now. We really need to get to a precision of much less than 5% in order to see a deviation caused by one TV scale new physics. Okay, this is just a very simple power copy. And among the couplings that already exist, exist in the standard model, I personally think the loop induced couplings are, are very interesting because they are the new so-called oblique corrections. The, ob the oblique corrections in the precision electrical measurement are the corrections that show up in the, the self-energy of the W and Z boson. 
Here, the ob new oblique correction, I meant that these are the corrections that show in the self-energy of the Higgs boson. Okay? So, and the way to see this is if there's something that gives you, give you a new correction to the self-energy of the Higgs, and if this new something, this blob, carries a standard model gauge quantum number, then they will couple to the standard model gauge boson. So that means you can attach to standard model gauge boson to this blob. And then if you put one of the Higgs into its web, then you see that this gives you a correction to the Higgs cup into the two standard model gauge boson. Okay? So uh, this is especially uh, uh, important for the loop induced coupling, such as two gluons or two photons or photon plus Z. This tells you that whatever new physics that uh, gives a new correction to the Higgs self energy, if it carries standard model gauge quantum number, it will show up in the Higgs cup into two gluons if you carry color, or Higgs cup into two photons if you carry electric charge, and also Higgs cup into Z plus photons. And so this argument is especially important given the naturalist expectation that something has to uh, uh, so cancel the quadric, one new quadratic divergence in the Higgs mass coming from the standard model. Okay? So if something, some new physics that, sta uh, that will stabilize the Higgs mass, and unless something uh, uh, sits in the hidden sector, otherwise, generically, this something would correct the uh, uh, Higgs coupling to massless gauge boson. So uh, to summarize very briefly, uh, uh, loop-induced couplings are the, the new oblique observables, and in natural electrosymmetry breaking uh, uh, scenario, these couplings are modified naturally, and any observed modification in loop-induced couplings is a smoking gun signal for either naturalness or unnatural. Okay, and just to give you a very concrete example, in so-called the Higgs and uh, the pseudo uh, boson boson models, such as these uh, little Higgs models or or these. Uh, Composite Higgs models that uh, you see that indeed in these models the Higgs cup into two gluons are always reduced from the standard model expectation. Okay. And also it should be emphasized since we are looking at the 10 to 20 years from now, and you know I, I told you that uh, naturally you expect the deviation in the Higgs cup to be in the order of five percent. So we are talking about precision Higgs measurement right now. And if we are talking about precision Higgs measurement, that means that theoretically we have better. Uh, uh, we cannot just re rely on leading order correction. Okay, so there is an urgent need to go for a uh, next to leading order correction uh, for the uh, beyond standard model uh, uh, scenarios, other than MSSM. Of course, traditionally, you know, for within M MSSM, there is a lot of uh, 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 high order correction that are, that are already included. <coughs> But this has not been done for a lot of other uh, BSM scenarios. And I think there is an urgent need to fill the void in the next uh, 10, 20 years before we have a new uh, glider. Okay. And this just give you an example of uh, 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 what happened. And let me skip this. Let's just say that if there are new, new, new particles, two new particles contributing to the uh, uh, loop-induced coupling, then the, the, the possibility would, uh, the constraint would change drastically. But what I really want to emphasize is that uh, uh, there is a so-called the complementary complementarity between the precision Higgs measurement and the direct searches for these uh, uh, new particles. Okay. Uh, for example, there has been some discussion about uh, searching for uh, 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 like a in SULI top squat at the 100 TV machine. And this is uh, a study coming out of Slack. And these people uh, studied uh, uh, at the you know, uh, uh, 100 TV hadron collider with uh, 3,000 inverse pentagon bond of uh, luminosity. What is the reach in, in the uh, search for top score? You see roughly for the discovery, you can get to roughly you know, 6 TV. For exclusion, you can roughly get to 8 TV, OK? But however, you see there is this uh, 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 funny if blue line here that corresponds to the so-called compressed spectrum. It's right here as well, correspond to the compressed spectrum. That is when all your SUSY particles are roughly degenerate, then suddenly your acceptance uh, becomes a lot smaller in your collider. And then your reach <laughs> becomes 
a last model. Okay, so this is tell you, telling you that the, the direct search constraints very, very much depend on the assumptions on your spectrum. Okay, and so uh, uh, to to make a statement about the reach, you always have to make some assumption about the spectrum. Okay, this is what I just said. But however, the constraints from precision Higgs measurements involve a different set of assumptions. Okay, for example, it, it only involves the coupling of this new particle to the Higgs. It does not care about the rest of the spectrum in your decay chain. So in this sense, uh, these uh, the precision Higgs measurements and the direct searches are complementary to each other. Okay. And another complementary complementarity I want to uh, uh, emphasize is that uh, the precision Higgs measurements and the precision electro wave measurements are also complementary to each other. Okay. For example, this is uh, 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 the current uh, measurement of the Higgs coupling to vector boson coming from Atlas and, and CMS. You see roughly, uh, again, we have a 10, 15% uh, uncertainty in the Higgs coupling to uh, W and Z boson, okay? But on the other hand, you know, uh, we can also constrain the same coupling using precision Higgs measurement, using the so-called the O oblique corrections, because, you know, Higgs boson enter into the self cup, cup, uh, uh, energy of the W and Z boson. So before the discovery of the Higgs, we do not know the Higgs mass, so we use the oblique correction to constrain the Higgs mass, assuming a standard model HWW coupling. But now since we know the Higgs mass, we can turn the whole argument around. Okay? Since we know the Higgs mass, we can use the, the uh, uh, self energy of W to constrain the Higgs coupling to W and Z boson using precision Higgs measurement. And this is exactly what these people did. And the, the parameter A here is exactly kappa V that I showed in the previous slide. And you see that in, indeed, coming from the W mass me measurement, you can put a very, very stringent constraint on the Higgs coupling to the W mass. This is 10%, so this is within 4% of the standard model uh, 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 coupling, okay? But of course, this involve again involve a different set of assumption from the direct searches because here the assumption is that uh, there is no other new physics contribute to this uh, uh, oblique correction. If you make that assumption, you see that uh, the, the uh, W mass measurement alone constrain the Higgs coupling to W and Z boson to be within five percent of standard model. And then uh, the second topic is that uh, uh, I, I want to mention is so-called the anonymous uh, coupling structures. And this uh, a case study is Higgs decay to a vector boson plus a pair of charged leptons. Okay? And this is the work of, uh, by these two groups. So they show you that even if you have the, exactly the standard model expectation signal strength, the distributions in the decay of the, uh, uh, this uh, 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 Higgs plus uh, uh, Higgs going to vector boson plus two charged leptons could be very, very different. So there could be a lot of new physics hidden in these distributions. So what this is uh, uh, saying is that, you know, all these distri different distributions will come from different uh, coupling structure in the Higgs uh, uh, coupling to vector boson plus two charged leptons, okay? So th this is saying that we cannot just uh, 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 rely on the signal strength alone we need to look into the distributions, kinematic distribution, to make sure that we are measuring exactly the coupling structure that we would expect from the standard model. Because there could be new coupling structure that would show up in the distribution, but you cannot determine that uh, uh, by based on the signal strength alone. Okay. And so the, uh, uh, another example, uh, as I said, I. I personally think the CP violation uh, in Higgs decay is a very important topic because you know we know that in the, within standard model there's just not enough amount of CP violation. So now we discover this new particle at the 125 GeV. Of course, we want to know whether it brings us a new source of CP violation. So this is one example that uh, uh, in the Higgs decay to vector uh, boson plus two charged leptons, you can also. Uh, uh, measure the uh, uh, CP violation in either Higgs coupling to two photons or Higgs coupling to Z plus photons, okay? 
and so this is a, the, the, the same, along the same topic, but let me skip that. So now it should be clear that signal strength is not the whole picture. At least in 10, 20 years from now, you know, uh, that should not be the, the whole picture. We want to be, in 10 years, we want to be extracting maximum amount of information from everything we measure, all right? So then the natural question is how do we do that? Okay, so to some extent, we are already trying to get the most out of the LHC data. One example is so-called the matrix element method, and this is the one uh, that is applied to determine the spin and CP property of the H125 resonance. Basically, in, in a simple word, it just means that you measure every single kinematic distribution from the decay of the heat, and compare with standard model expectation. Because if the, the resonance has the different spin or different uh, CP property, the distribution, kinematic distribution, will look different from the standard model expectation. Okay, so so that that's basically uh, uh, the idea. So uh, essentially, the, I, the the what I'm trying to argue here is that in, in 10, 20 years from now, we should not be just looking at a signal strength. We need to be looking at every single kinematic distribution that we can measure and compare it with standard model expectation. And theoretically, the, the machinery that allows us to do that is not there yet. We do not, currently, we do not have the framework or machinery to compare every single kinematic distribution in the Higgs decay with the standard model expectation. But there are some young people that are working very hard uh, in that direction. Okay. So now, uh, the, uh, the third topic is soft new physics in Higgs decay. And as I mentioned, you know, a lot of work has been done in the so-called Higgs polar dark matter. If the dark matter mass is less than uh, uh, MH over two, but soft new physics does not have to be dark matter. Okay, this is just saying that the 125 GV could have some exotic decay channel that is not predicted by the standard model. And since the Higgs is only 125 GV, if any new physics were to show up in the decay of the 125 GV, it has to be soft. The mass cannot be larger than 125 GV. Okay, and so uh, a group of uh, uh, theorists, including Tao Liu, uh, 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 put out this very comprehensive uh, 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 study on exotic decays of the 125 GV. Okay, and it's a very systematic study based on the decay topology, that you have all these different uh, possible uh, decay topology of exotic decay of the 125 GV Higgs. And then the challenge is, how do we dig out the soft signal? Okay? And so one possibility is that if you have a laptop collider where you have very clean environment, then it's much easier to dig out a soft signal. Okay? But if you have a hadron collider, it's going to be much more difficult. <coughs> Okay, so in this sense, I really want to emphasize that uh, the possibility that this possibility, so that we can all together think about whether we want to design a special detector in the future hadron machine, just to uh, 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 for the purpose of uh, uh, seeing these kind of soft stuff. Just like you know, uh, uh, at the we have this LHCb that is special purpose detector designed for to study the B meson. So I really want to emphasize that uh, perhaps we should be thinking about whether we want to de design a special de detector just for the purpose of seeing these soft stuff. Okay. And this is the right time to do it because because nothing has been done so far. So the you know, it's 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 a complete blank page. And we can just you know uh, uh, think about all different possibilities. And the last possibility is the partners of the 125 GV Higgs. And here I just uh, uh, want to emphasize that it's very, there's a very useful complementarity between the, the, uh, uh, the precision Higgs measurement on the property of 125 GV Higgs and the direct search for partners of the Higgs. And one example here is uh, this is the search for additional uh, neutral scalar decay into two tiles in the so-called either 2 xw model and MSSM on the MA and 10 beta <coughs> fan, okay? So usually you see these uh, 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 band, this is a direct search 
uh, limit. Okay. But what I want to emphasize that it's very useful if you overlay this uh, constraint, direct search constraint, with the property of the 125 GV heap with its uh, MSSN. Okay. And so this is exactly what happens. So again, this is uh, uh, interpreting this uh, a direct search limit for the heavy neutral scalar in MAK beta plane versus the property of the 125 GV Higgs in these blue lines are the 125 GV Higgs coupling to the WNZ boson. <coughs> Point A meaning that it's within 80% of the standard model expectation. Point 0.7 meaning it's within 70% of standard model expectation. So if you, uh, this is a decoupling limit. If you believe the decoupling limit, the decoupling already tells you that, you know, the direct searches tell you that the, these uh, MA cannot be heavier than 400 GV. Okay, except that there's a special case that is so-called the alignment limit where you can have a very light uh, 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 MA where as the H125 property is still completely standard model light, which is the red line here. But even in this case, you see that in this very low MA and very low 10 beta region is still ruled out by the precision Higgs measure. Okay, so there's a very useful complementarity here. And the search strategy for this extra scalar will be very different when taking into account the property of H125. In this case, you see that the heavy Higgs boson mostly decay below the two top threshold is actually mostly decay into the two little h. And once the top threshold opens up, it decays to two to the top. This is very different from the typical uh, 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 search strategy where people mostly look at the BP and tau tau. Okay. So there's a very useful thing uh, uh, to be looked at here. And so then the question naturally is uh, how does this complementarity play out in the future hadron machine, All right? So I'm almost done. And so I pose a number of questions provided no answers. And I think, as I said, uh, the field is wide open. Pretty much for every study at the RSC, there's always a future glider version of the study to be completed, okay? And the, so the conclusion is yet to be written. And so I have no conclusion. However, I, I do have, a, a, since I'm talking about the you know, future machines, I do have a, a, a few slides just to, to, I'm sure a lot of you know this already, but I just have a few slides to show the, what are the possibilities that are being considered right now. And of course, uh, very well known is, uh, and this is probably the possibility that is the closest to be on shell, that is uh, the ILC. Uh, and this is the, of course, I'm sure there is a new update, but, but from the last year at the HEPAP meeting, meeting in the US, this is sort of the, the possible timeline of the, the, the International Linear Collider in Japan. And this is a laptop machine. And uh, uh, but, I think uh, uh, particularly interesting is the comparison of Higgs cross section at 1400 TV, that is, if you consider a new 100 TV hydro machine. Okay? So here you can see for yourself, for the gluon fusion production of Higgs, in going from 14 to 100, the increase in the cross section is like 15 times, even though the increase in signal mass energy is roughly 7. Okay? And BBF, the increase in cross section is roughly 20 times. And W and Z associated with production, the increase is order of 10 times. And for TD bar Higgs, a very important coupling to be measured, uh, the increase in the cross section is 60 times. Whereas the, the BB bar Higgs is 70, 17 times, and the double Higgs production, the increase is 50 times uh, 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 increase in the cross section. And so I think uh, 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 this. Comparison alone tells you where the opportunities are, and, and why the, uh, 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 a lot of us are very excited about this possibility of a hundred TV machine. And we know that uh, uh, where where is it going to be? We know that the CERN is talking about a, a new circuit glider that will be used as an E plus E minus machine first, and then uh, 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 be upgraded to a new uh, hadron machine at hundred TV. Okay. And of course, China is also talking about the new possibility. So uh, whether any of this is going to happen or not,
hard. Uh, nobody knows, but a lot of people are working very hard uh, 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 to realize these machines. And and for the rest of the community, I think this is also the right time to be thinking about, uh, especially for young people, this is the right time to be thinking about future, like 10, 20, 30 years from now. And, and the study needs to be done right now because uh, uh, people are thinking about the machine parameter and, and the detectors and all that. So, so it's very important that at least we spend <coughs> some fraction of our time thinking about uh, uh, the future studies and future machines. So this is where I'll stop. Thank you very much. Nice talk. So any questions? My view is that there is no tension between the Higgs mass me measurement and the precision improvement. Why? Why? Why is there any tension? It's, <laughs> what do you mean there is? Well, it's a, it's a logarithmic. The, 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 <laughs> the, 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 the way the Higgs mass enter into the oblique correction is a logarithmic dependent. Okay? So when you talk about log of 90 GV versus log of 125 GV in my mind, come on. What is the difference? Mm -hmm. However, the heat coupling to the W boson here, the way you enter into oblique correction is quadratic because it's coupling square. That's why the constraint is much stronger. Okay? Right? The question? Please let me know the what kind of PDF set that you're keeping in the calibration in the 100 TV collider hardware. How much PDF did I have on it? That, that's a very good question. So for that, uh, let me point you to my sentence here. The field is wide open. It had, the answer is it has not been done. Okay, but that's exactly why I want to emphasize that we need, we need to be thinking about these questions right now. We cannot wait until the machine is already being built to be thinking about it, such important issue like PDF and 100 TV, right? And, but of course, there are a lot of people, the PDF people, they are very much aware of this. So they, they already did start thinking about this issue. But, but nevertheless, it's a very important question and pretty much we need to rethink the standard model all over again when you go to 100 TV. Everything you know about standard model has to be re rethought and recomputed when you go to 100 TV. For example, and people even talk about you know uh, uh, electrically pseudo uh, uh, cough law. You know, when you go to 100 TV, the W and Z boson effectively look like massless particles. So you could have a shower of W and Z boson look like W jet or Z jet. So they are very uh, uh, novel features that to be explored at 100 TV. Okay. So what's the difference between the sound I use 100 TV and right. the Chinese uh, link? What, what, what is the difference? Difference, yeah. Uh, well, I, is there any in well, of course, the 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 the, the detailed uh, parameter of the two machines are not the same. Uh, but however, my take is that whatever difference there is, uh, in the end of the day, it probably would not matter because uh, if we only have one machine built then that is the best we have. It, 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 there's no point talking about 
an imaginary machine with another imaginary machine, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least that's just my take. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much.